So the creator, sci-fi film from Gareth Edwards, who um, came on our show to talk about Monsters, which if you remember the story of Monsters, he had basically done the special effects in his home. He had done them on computers in his home. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a really remarkable film. He kind of went on holiday with friends. Yes. To Central and South America to to do the filming. Yeah, so, so they, they filmed it like a road trip. They yeah. actually did do the trip. And it was the two main leads. And then he, you know, they were filming the stuff. And then afterwards, he put the visual effects in. And the film ended up looking like it cost a huge amount of money. Yes. It actually cost thrumpence. He did the 2014 Godzilla, which had that memorable halo jump sequence, which I think is really extraordinary. He had a kind of fairly rough ride on Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And this is his now coming back to, to science fiction. I didn't bring that later. up. No, because, of course, because, I mean, the film, I think it was fine, but he, I think he had a bit of a tough time in it. So this is based on a script by Edwards and Chris Weitz, who, is it Weitz or Weitz? Weitz, who co-wrote... Rogue One, whose directorial credits include New Moon, which I think is actually the the least good of the Twilight movies, and Golden Compass, or to give it its full title, the ill-fated yes. Golden Compass. This is set in a, well, you tell me if you, if you think it's so, a post-apocalyptic future. I mean, because there has been a, there's been a nuclear... There's, there's been a nuclear bomb, but it's not a... Poc- no, okay. Everyone else is fine, apart from the bit... That that got nuked. Okay, so it's set in a future in which mankind is at war with AI yeah. after you know, there has been a a, a, a nuking. Um, we get a, the title sequence is great. It shows the rise of home robots from sort of retro ads about you know mechanical aids giving you a drink when you're sitting down on the couch to current development and then into tense sort of future fantasy. John David Washington is Joshua, who we first meet living an apparently idyllic hippie life out in the wilds with his pregnant wife. Then there is an attack by military forces who are searching for the creator. Turns out he's ex-special forces. The narrative then jumps to him being deployed, jumps forward to him being deployed to search for a new weapon that will apparently end, win the war between mankind and, and AI. He's also secretly on the trail of his wife, who he believes to be alive, who was there in that sequence at the beginning. Film co-stars Alison Janney, who's a military colonel, who clearly... CJ! ...asked for the and, because it is an and. Anyway, here's a clip. It's Howell. Answer the phone. Shipley, I know you're there. Colonel. Taylor, where's Shipley? I'm with him right now. He's in, he's in pretty bad shape. All right, listen to me. Did you locate the weapon? Yeah, it's, it's here. I'm with it. Describe it. It's a kid. It, it's it's a kid. They make it into some kind of kid. It, that, that's the weapon. What? Colonel, look. I can't reach you. You have to bring it to me. Do you understand? No, Shipley can't move. I mean, he's he's not looking good at all. Police are everywhere. I don't know how I'm getting out right now. I, I don't even have an exit strategy right then now. Then you know what you have to do. Kill it. In case you didn't catch that, he says, this is the weapon. What is it? He says, it's a kid. It's some kind of a kid. And there is indeed an, an AI kid played by Madeline Univoyles. Am I saying that correctly? Because you believe so. asked uh, Gareth Evers about it. And um, he thinks the child who has the ability to grow can also lead him to his lost love, who he still believes to be around. So he's, what then happens is he's on that particular trail they are on his trail, so the special forces are after him because they want to get the weapon. As you said before, with Monsters, what happened was Gareth Edwards took a road trip, two key actors, then put the creatures in afterwards. Similar approach here. I mean, what they do is breathtaking uh, location work in Thailand with the VFX added afterwards. But the whole thing feels very physical and real because the location stuff is really, really good. And this is like what he's doing, what he did with Monsters, he's kind of repeating here. And this is something that he is very, very adept at. The design work of the film is, I think, great. Not least the Nomad, which is a vast floating weapon system which kind of beams these lights down onto the ground if it wants to send missile strikes. You and I both thought the same thing, which is Captain Scarlet. I know you brought this up in the interview. You mentioned this last night because it's Skybase and then it's the light on the floor, which is the Mr. Ons. If if anyone remembers Captain Scarlet, the first signal that you knew that the Mr. Arns were around was these two, two incredibly two cheap circles. <laughs> circles of light appearing over you, in which case you knew that you'd had it. But there's but there's also that idea of the floating sky, because actually this, the, the Nomad thing, it looks like a, like a cross between 
between Skybase and between the, the the huge off-world colony from Elysium, for example. And it's really, it's vast and it's very, very impressive. And I like the idea of it floating over the earth and shining this kind of beam down in this threatening way. Edwards has always been good at scale. If you think about Godzilla, you think about that halo jump sequence I was talking about before, he really did, ha- he knows how to do massive and physical on screen. He's very, very good at using uh, VFX to look like they're really there and they've really got you know, a, a sense of physicality. The The idea of the artificial intelligence uh, beings being, they've got humanoid faces, but they've got these kind of weird, like mechanical heads, like think, for example, of Ex Machina. And then these holes that go all the way through, you will have seen this in the poster, that there's kind of like a hole. Yeah, like a, you like can see problem. cables and stuff. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of odd and doesn't really make any sense. But it's a, you know, it's it's a visual thing to tell you, okay, this is, you know, these, these it's are... It's us and them. It's us and them. And you can tell it's them because they've got a big uh, hole through their head. But I think the world building is is terrific. I thought it really, really looked good. I thought the storytelling was flawed. But I thought it was adventurous. I mean, some of the AI evolution stuff doesn't really make sense. And some of the some of the way in which the plot plays out, you go, okay, that's, that's not quite, I, I don't buy that. It, it doesn't make, but then again, like Blade Runner, which had a similar thing, you know, it doesn't need to make sense in order for it to be engaging. I mean, like Blade Runner, the overall arc of the story is sympathetic to the synthetic. I mean, whenever we're told it's not real, it's just programming. And then you're confronted with, you know, the, the AI, who well, everything about the movie is telling you, well, of course it's real. And, you know, if, 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 a, if, a, if something is sentient or believes itself to be sentient, and if you have at the centre of it a child, so, I mean, you're thinking, for example, here of Steven Spielberg's AI, because the whole thing in AI is that people are horrified that they've made a child, that they've made an artificial child. And oddly enough, weirdly watching it as well, I was also thinking of precedents like, I mean, at times I was thinking of Scorsese's Kunden and Bertolucci's Last Emperor, because this idea about a young being onto whom are projected, you know, huge cultural weight, that they that they are hugely significant, and yet they are a child, and yet they are so much more than a child. There's also a kind of a war action movie element, big action sequences. I mean, it, it, it kind of, you can take of it as like AI meets Apocalypse Now, and it's unsurprising that Edwards himself has cited Apocalypse Now, Blade Runner, Akira, E.T., Rain Man, which is an interesting one, and Paper Moon. These are, you know, stories about adults and children or, you know, in the case of Paper Moon. It's big, grand-scale sci-fi. There are, mom- there, are, there are patches in it when, when it, I thought it didn't work. But I think the ambition and the scale and the, the world-building is really really impressive and we both saw it together and at the end of it you sent me a text which said i enjoyed that yeah um, yeah no no i absolutely i absolutely did and i was surprised it'd be interesting to see what other, what people make of it when they email the show but i was surprised how anti-american it is certainly anti-us army yes and that was i, I didn't have time to pick it to pick that up with uh, with gareth you'll hear the interview on next week's uh, podcast but you know what i mean about it it is it's it's grand scale big ideas science fiction isn't it yes which is a good thing. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I I would. I have done. Excellent.